nice place to come down here and relax. And check it's out. It's been a long time since I've been down here. Yeah, me too. Especially with the river up this high. Yeah. Check out, check out the meeting of anhingas out there on the trees. Those are, wow. those are diving birds. They, they're fish. They eat fish. And they swim underwater for long, long, long uh, distances. You would know that. <laughs> Many times they're confused with a cormorant. Okay. But that is an anhinga. <laughs> You've always been very interesting to talk to. Well, yep. we're here today at the Phoenix City Riverwalk. And I've got my good friend here with me, Brandon Eagle, And I want to welcome him on Faces and Places. And we want to invite you guys to join us. Brandon has quite an interesting story about his life that I want to share with you guys. So we'll be right back. So like I told you guys, we're down here at the Phoenix City Riverwalk and there's all kinds of things going on around us. So if you see people zip lining or walking by us, just say hello. Yeah. Anyway, we've got my good friend here with us, Grandin Eagle, and I told you he's got a very interesting story. Grandin and I have known each other, we're just trying to figure this out, over 20 years. Yeah. And what brought us together was music. Uh, yeah, when we were in preschool. <laughs> <laughs> it was <laughs> it was music absolutely it was music yeah a love of music and and uh, writing songs and playing songs and making harmony we're, we're both big into harmony so yeah that's, that's what yes yeah, so the way we, I remember it we even sang in a group together y'all get a kick out of this it was called midlife crisis <laughs> <laughs> and there's an interesting story behind that. We'll tell you that on another show. Yeah, that's right. But that's right. Uh, we had so much fun singing three-part harmony and writing songs together and going out performing here in the area. And Grandin is still performing yeah. and he's teaching guitar lessons and doing all kinds of things. And that's what I wanted Grandin to share with you. Um, so let's just kind of start from the beginning, Grandin, about who you are and where you came from, if you don't mind. Sure. I, well, I'm... I'm from the area, I, I was born in Columbus and uh, into a musical family, so that's, I come by the music, honestly. My dad was a, a teacher in the uh, Muscogee County School District, and uh, he was also a director and uh, choral music director at several churches around town. So, and my mother was a violin player in the Columbus Symphony Orchestra, so I was destined to be a musician. And um, I bucked that trend, though. I, I played trumpet all the way through college, and then I said, I'm going to put that down. I, I don't want to be a musician. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't partake in music for, for quite a while. And uh, then I realized something was missing and picked it back up. When I picked it back up, I picked back up a guitar because I found out that girls like the guitar. The guitar <laughs> so, you know, that's, I decided the guitar was better than the trumpet at that point. All right. So, I know that opens up a lot of doors for you, and your sister Nomi also plays an instrument. My, my sister does. She, that's right. She's she's uh, she started. She's my older sister. She's she's uh, three years older than me, and I she played French horn, uh -huh. you know, as her as her uh, music uh, musical instrument through school, and. Uh, Recently, uh, when we needed a bass player in our praise band at church, uh, she stepped up and I, I let her borrow my bass and I never got it back. Uh, <laughs> so she's been a, a bass player ever since and a, and a mighty good one now. Yeah, yeah well, We've absolutely. had a lot of fun with Noni playing with That's us right. also. And she sings very well too. Yes, so. she does. Yeah. So you are blessed to have a musical family. Absolutely. Not Absolutely. only your real musical family, but you also have a huge music family of the musicians around here in this area. That's right. And I, you know, the, the music is uh, the best medicine. And so I've decided that wrapping myself up with uh, people that love music and, and going to places that love music is uh, what I try to spend time doing when I can. Well, I had always worked with a lot of musicians here in this area when I started out doing open mic night at the Loft. And I had been in bands 
most of my life and I had seen the camaraderie that happens with musicians yeah and when something happens to one of us it's like when something happens in your family yeah. everybody pulls together so Brandon had an accident and I want him to tell you about this yeah. but I just wanted to say that the outpouring of love from the community was just astounding so uh, uh, I was blessed by that no yes. doubt about it I was I was totally blessed I it's been 13 years next month it'll be 13 years I I uh, I grew up as a a guy that had a lot of toys uh, used to live by the by the um, statement that he who dies with the most toys wins. But I've kind of adjusted that uh, late here later in life. But uh, one of my toys was a little airplane, a little uh, experimental airplane. And um, 13 years ago, I I went to fly my airplane, and as I was taking off, the engine failed, and at the absolute worst time, and I ended up crashing it. And um, uh, you know, got pretty severely injured, uh, and the, the most telling injury uh, is the spinal cord injury that I, that I received hitting the ground, and uh, which paralyzed me from the waist down. And, um, you know, I've been living with that for 13 years now. That and the pain that comes along with it, which is no fun. <laughs> I know, and I've seen you suffer so many times, but yeah. you still try to keep that smile on your face. And that's why I wanted to talk with Brandon today, because he's so encouraging and such an inspiration to me. And I hope that he will be to you as well. Um, I know it's probably hard for you to talk about that day, but can you just tell us a little bit about what you remember and just kind of walk us through the steps of what happened to you in those first months? Well, I, I remember a, I remember a lot of it. I'm, I'm thankful for that because a lot of times when people receive a, a you know motor vehicle accident of any kind, a lot of your memory you know is wiped clean from concussion. And I had a concussion, uh, but I remember everything down to the sound of the airplane hitting the ground. Wow. And uh, uh, you know, I wish I could say I had some inspirational thought right before I hit the ground, but my last thought was, boy, this is going to hurt. Oh no. <laughs> And uh, the the good thing was that that uh, God didn't didn't let me suffer. I mean, I you know I was knocked out and I was uh, unconscious and I was by myself and I was trapped and uh, severely injured. But uh, He said just sleep through all that. So uh, when I regained consciousness, uh, the life flight helicopter was already there, and they were get, they were trying to get me out. Matter of fact, I told them how to cut me out of the airplane. They were really? trying to figure out how to get the airplane off of me, and I told them what to what to cut. And and uh, you know, so I remember everything about the about the accident. And it was it was unfortunate accident. I had a fuel line that split, and when you stop feeding the engine fuel. It's pretty predictable what's going to happen, mm -hmm. and you know, airplane doesn't just drop out of the sky when a you know when the engine quits, but it becomes a glider, and it's not a very effective glider. So, I had the the option of crashing in the trees or crashing on the runway, and I figured if I crashed in the trees, nobody would know where I was. So I ended up crashing on the runway, and um, you know, thankfully, a gentleman that lived there next to the airport heard it and came out and. Uh, from the time the 911 call went in to the time they rolled me in the emergency room was 54 minutes. So they made it in the golden hour, and uh, you know, and that started a long, long recovery period. I, I I was there at the medical center for a week in intensive care. There had uh, surgeries to stabilize my back. Um, I had a lot of facial injuries, punctured lung, uh, and then they transferred me up to the Shepherd Center up in Atlanta which I was, a, that was a blessing to be at the Shepherd Center. Uh, it's a facility that needs to be bigger. <laughs> There's a need for that facility and uh, not everybody gets to go up there and the level of um, care and the level of uh, knowledge that they mm -hmm. teach you about learning how to live with a spinal cord injury is far and above uh, most places in the United States. There's a couple of places that people say, are better, but there, you know, I, I, I'm just glad I was there. You know, I was up there for probably about four months uh, recovering, but uh, because I had so many injuries, um, I was in ICU for a total of 21 days, and uh, I was up there for about about four months, and I had to uh, 
figure out how to live in my house alone. I, I mean, I'm, I live by myself. I, I had at that time, my son was 13 and he, he came to live with me every other week. So I had to figure out how to live with a spinal cord injury uh, and living basically by myself every other week and taking care of my 13 year old son the off weeks yeah. or the own weeks, whichever way you want to look at it. And so there was a big learning curve and a big learning process of figuring out how to do that. And a lot of the, um, I give a lot of credit to the, the pouring of the community, pouring out of the community that, that you, that you mentioned a little bit ago. Mm -hmm. um, people came out of the woodwork, people I knew uh, for a long time, people that were new friends and people I didn't even know. And uh, they showed up up at my house, helped me to uh, uh, adapt my house. I, I uh, reconfigured the the bathroom, so it, you know, so it, uh, I had a roll-in shower. I had to widen the doors, take out all the carpet, put in hardwood mm -hmm. floors, and all that. So, you know, all that happened in a span of about four or five months, and then it was okay. Figure out how to get back into life and one of the mistakes a lot of people make after they have a, a injury like this is to try to get back to where they were before it's like right. I just want to get back to my, my life back to normal right but uh, what it really is is getting back to a new normal right uh, figuring out and and it's not that much different than normal uh, it doesn't have to be but uh, it's not ever going to be the same but it doesn't have to be bad and it hasn't been you know, there's rough times, but life is still good. I'm still blessed on a on a regular basis. Uh, I can still enjoy most things that I that I want to enjoy. Um, most of the things I can't do, I didn't want to do anyway. <laughs> Somebody else has to carry all the heavy stuff, you know. So. Well, it's speaking a, of carrying heavy stuff, I have seen you figure out ways to strap things onto your back or put things into bags or pull something, I just all kinds of things that you do to adapt to your situation. You don't let anything stop you. Well, adapt is the is the key word there. I mean, you just got to figure out a way. And I, you know, I am a guitar player and, and getting a d guitar from the house to the car, from the car to the venue, um, usually by myself, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, I just figured out a way to, you know, take one of these little file uh, rollers. It's a, it's a, you normally carry uh, files in and mm -hmm. I put my guitar in that and hook it on the back of my chair and it's like a little trailer and I just, you know, pull it along to wherever it needs to go. And, uh, you know, I am on wheels, so as long as I can push, it's, you know, I don't have to carry this stuff. I just <laughs> hang it on me, you know, I hang the guitar on the back, whatever. You and figure it out. Yeah. Not, I probably do more than I'm supposed to, and I definitely do more than I'm supposed to because usually it, I pay the price the next day, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm pretty sore. But. Um, and I know that you have to have sort of advance notice to do things because it takes you a while to get ready and it takes you a while to just figure out what it is that you need to do to make that happen. Well, but that's I want to tell you, I'm so proud of you because you just get out in the community and do so many things. And he told me just before Christmas that he's going to start teaching guitar lessons. So I'm just I'm getting. Very I'm happy just about that. I'm just getting that cranked up. I'm I'm uh, I, I'm still not 100% there, but I've got a few students that I'm already teaching, and you know most of them are my friends. And I'm just now about ready to open it up to you know to people that I'll that will be new friends uh, that I don't know at this point, and uh, hopefully I'll you know be able to find the students through social media and word of mouth and I think that'll probably give me more than what I need to be honest with you. Well you've, you've got a new audience here so if anybody out there wants to take guitar lessons you need to get in touch with Grandin. Either. That's right. Um, we're gonna get Grandin to play a song for us here in just a little bit but before we do that Grandin I wanted to talk to you a little bit about reinventing yourself because we all do that as we grow older but you had to really do it you know, to, to get to where you are right now. So I know your faith is a huge part of your life and, and I credit that to your attitude. 
Um, yep. I know that you have questioned God. You, it's perfectly normal for you to do that. You've probably been angry. You've probably cried. You've probably gone through a whole spectrum of emotions. So um, if, if we can just take a serious little note here for a second and just tell me a little bit about how your faith got you through this situation. Well, the uh, first the first thing I would say is my church family uh, is a huge part of the, the people that came out and helped me uh, get everything adapted to, to uh, make life, you know, um, doable without uh, any more difficulty than it than need to be. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I can't imagine going through uh, a devastating, in life-changing in, uh, injury like this without a faith in something bigger than myself. Right. Um, and I choose to call that God, and not, you know I'm a believer of Christ, and um, I'm I'm glad to have somebody that I can call on uh, at any hour of the day, no matter how you know um, whether I'm angry or, or or troubled or scared or whatever you know of what I have to face. Uh, I know uh, that. Uh, my God is there to listen to me, to help me, and to guide me through the Holy Spirit to, to uh, find a way to continue to go day to day. And that's, I mean, that's probably the biggest thing is to learn how to live in the present moment on a day to day basis. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, you know, if you if you look too far out ahead, you know, it it gets scary. Right. And so. Um, It's important to just uh, take each day, uh, plan for the future, but take each day on its own and uh, figure out what you're going to have to do to, to make it to that next day. And it's not like I'm doing that as a um, because it's uh, because of the difficulty. It's just the way to do it. I mean, I, right. Um, I guess that would that, I, that's how I would answer that, and, and and I rely on my church family and I rely on my faith to uh, to get me through the hard times. I mean, I you know um, I spend a lot of time with my church family. Uh, I play in praise band at the, the Ridge United Methodist Church, is where I go uh, now to worship, and uh, I play in the. I'm, I'm very blessed to play in the band there because we have a abundance of talent there and most of them are a good bit younger than me mm-hmm. so I kind of carry the senior flag and the praise <laughs> band at the ridge but uh, my sister plays bass and like I said she's my older sister so I'm not the she's the standard bearer I guess but we have a we have a great group there and uh, you know the week the weeks that I am playing because I don't play every week there you know we, we take turns uh, uh, the weeks that I play there, you know, are, I look forward to that. It, it's something that um, all week long I'm looking forward to, to, to playing there. Mm-hmm. Um, so faith has a big part, you know, of uh, in, in recovering from an injury like this. And, and I think it's also the fact that you are such a loving, positive person anyway. Well, I, you know, it... it you, I've worked on that. I continue to work on it. I have my moments. Well, of course you do. You're human. (laughs) But, you know, uh, I just wanted to say to you and thank you that sometimes when I'm going through a little rough patch or I don't feel good or something, I think to myself, you know what? If Grandin can get up today and do what he's doing today, I certainly can. Well, you know, people people say, I, I have a hard time when people say, you're an inspiration. I hear that. And I have a hard time with that, you know, uh, because, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not in it to be an inspiration. I but, know. But I am grateful for that because I have people that are an inspiration to me. Right. And uh, so I've had to kind of accept that uh, as something that um, is a, it's a good thing, and I and I just need to uh, embrace that and and. Uh, continue to live my life in a way because you never know who's looking at you and you right. never know you never know who is uh, you know you never know who's looking at you and and 
when they're thinking that. Uh, you right. know, if Granny can get up, I certainly can do this, you know. But I, uh, I just do it because it is what there is to do. Right. Um, I, I know a lot of people, unfortunately, that have injuries like mine mm -hmm. that uh, choose the other path, and I and and I that that breaks my heart. Right. When I when that happens, but it is uh, a lot of it is attitude. A lot of it is deciding to live life rather than giving up, and. It could be easy, not for me, but I can understand where somebody, if somebody, oh, sorry. I can understand if somebody has, um, you know, doesn't have a faith. Right. Doesn't have a family. Right. Doesn't have friends. Right. I can understand where they would get very discouraged. But what, and at, right after my accident, when I was up at the Shepherd Center, there were people in wheelchairs everywhere. So I didn't feel any different. Mm -hmm. Because they were all over the place. Right. But when you get back to home, it, you know, it's a lot different. You know, you don't. And so I can see where people would uh, have a hard time with that. But to mm -hmm. me, it's just like, well, okay, the wheelchair is a little bit of an inconvenience. Uh, now, the chronic pain is, is a little tougher to deal with. But the wheelchair really is a little bit of an inconvenience. And, I, you know, I can't hang pictures on the wall anymore. But, um as you found out when we got here earlier today, uh, I can probably go faster than you getting from point A to point B. So. Especially in these shoes. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Excuse me. Well, Glennon, I want to thank you for talking about this. And I think you and I have never really sat down and talked about this. And here we are talking about it in front of all of our friends. That's right. So um, I want to encourage you guys, if you're going through something, to pray. Talk to your friends about it. Share how you're feeling. It's okay if you get depressed. It's oh, okay if you get frustrated. No doubt. It's okay if you get angry. All of these things are okay. What's not okay is giving up. And Brandon is a prime example of that because I've seen him be a photographer and he's teaching guitar lessons now and he's getting out and doing all kinds of things that you wouldn't even imagine. You still yeah, hunt a little bit? I, I do. I didn't I didn't hunt this year. <laughs> it, uh, my my golf cart has got a little problem and that's what I that's what I use to hunt out of. So I and I uh, and I gave up my hunting lease, so okay. uh, I didn't hunt this year. But, you know, um, the thing about the living with a spinal cord injury or I guess any kind of a um, limiting mm -hmm. factor uh, is it comes and goes in cycles. I mean, things come and go in cycles. I mean, just like... Uh, anybody, just like an able-bodied person, you have good days, you have bad days, right. and, and you know, if you can get to the point where you just accept where you are and, and what you're dealing with, and you look for the positive things, just uh, it's really not a whole lot of difference uh, of how it is living a. a a good life as an able-bodied person. I mean, you know, it just is a lot of attitude. You got to, mm -hmm. you got to just look for the silver lining because there's usually a silver lining in most everything. And I've, I've been blessed that the Lord has uh, brought me to the po point where uh, I have a more positive outlook on life than I did before I had my accident. To be honest with you. Um, you know, I, I had times when I got down and I got depressed, and it would keep me down for a long time. Right. Nowadays, if I get depressed, I just don't stay there very long because it just doesn't doesn't do any good to stay there. Mm -hmm. Pity parties are <laughs> just not worth it. Yeah, and they're no fun either. They're no fun. I, and, and usually, usually I have pity parties by myself, and I don't like the guests. So. Okay. Well, speaking of parties. We have played many parties together, and I am looking forward to you playing a song for us. So, would you do that? I'll do that. All right. Birds fly on wings from the ground to the tree. Such 
such a parentes. Oh, how I wish, I wish that I could fly like a bird. that I could fly like a bird, like a bird in the sky, in the sky, clouds floating by, changing shapes as they go. that I could float on the wind like a cloud in the sky in the sky now I know these things I wish for may never come to be be alright with me, a little peace and understanding would be alright with me. Shifting with the time Oh, how I wish I wish that I could light up the night Oh, how I wish I wish that I could light up the night Like a star in the sky, in the sky, like a bird flying high, like a cloud floating by, like a star in the night, how I wish that I could fly. I want to thank my good friend Brandon Eagle. Thank you for having me. For being Enjoyed here with it. us today at the Phoenix City River Walk and for sharing with us about your life. It is very interesting and inspiring, and I'm so grateful you're my friend. Oh, thank cool. you. Thank you. All right, so Brandon's going to have a new CD coming out, and he's teaching guitar lessons. And I think we can find you on Facebook, can't we, Brandon? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Grand, uh, Facebook, Brandon Equal One. Uh, no, just Grandin One. Grandin right. One. G-R-A-N-D-I-N One. Yeah. And it's, it's Brandon like Brandon with the G. Yes. 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 E-A-K-L-E. -E. And, and once I get my guitar business up and going, I, I'll have a... Facebook page for that. So. All right, so but we'll be looking for that. It'll be similar to that. <laughs> All right. Well, we want to thank you guys for joining us today on Faces and Places, where you never know whose face you'll see, like Grand and Equals, or which place we'll be, like the Phoenix City Riverwalk. So until we see you next time, take care of yourselves, and remember, I love you.